Hi guys, welcome back to Hilltop Farm. I'm Jay and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a recipe that we call Chicken Isabel. Now, this is an interesting recipe this one. It's um, originated from the Scottish borders and it was originally um, thought of by a lady obviously named Isabel, hence the name. It started off as a bit of a frugal type of recipe um, where you could take uh, a young chicken or a young rabbit, in fact, in which case it was Rabbit Isabel. And it was a way of using most of the rabbit without too much wastage by using the breast meat um, sort of as solid piece of meat as the breast um, and by taking the leg meat and mincing and, or grinding that up uh, and using that as the filling. So I'm doing the chicken version today hence chicken Isabel. Now I have got four wonderful fillets here. Now what you do is you take each fillet and you cut it down the middle. Alright? Now, once you have cut it down the middle, what you want to do is get a bowl. Now in this bowl we have 50 grams of plain flour. Okay, we season it with a little ground pepper and salt. We put in half a teaspoon of dry mustard and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay, that gives it good flavour. Now, you take each fillet you've done and you coat it quite well with this. Now what you do is you have two little plates to one side so that once you've coated both sides of your fillet okay you put them on one each on, on the plates so that you know when you're putting them back together you then know which one correspond which top corresponds with which bottom in effect um, because you need to marry them up and you need them to fit so I'll keep going um, with all four fillets and I shall bring you back when they're all coated. Now once we have our four bases of our fillets um, all coated in the um, flour mixture, line them all up here. Now we take our pieces of bacon, okay, you'll just need one piece of bacon for each, each base. Okay, now obviously I'm just using sort of the eye end, um, the rest of it's cut off, that'll be my breakfast tomorrow. Okay, so we do that. Okay, pop that to one side. Now here, we have all our leg meat and other meat that's all been ground up. Okay, now what we do here is we add one egg white. Now, I'm going to go rather generous with the pepper. As you can see, there's quite a lot there. And a few couple of pinches there of our Himalayan rock salt. 
Now, we gently combine it. Takes a while to get it all moving, but once once you do, it becomes a bit sloppy, which is sort of what you want. You have to have some time to make sure that all the lumps are out of it and that your salt and pepper is mixed through evenly. I think that about does it. So we'll bring back our fillet bases with our, our bacon topping. Now, just evenly as you can anyway Now I'm sure you're looking at it thinking, what on earth? Okay, smooth it all down to form the shape of your fillet. And once you do that, it won't look quite so frightening. You see? Now, this makes, when we're finished, a very interesting little parcel. Okay, that about does it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put sorrel leaves on the top. Um, some of you may not have even heard of sorrel, but it's a very good herb. It was used in medieval times back in um, Britain. Uh, before the citrus fruits came into being, they used to use sorrel and it gives a, a, a mild citrusy flavour. Um, but it, it grows very easily if you get some having a pot somewhere in your garden. Doesn't like the full sun, well it certainly doesn't here in Australia. And it likes to be kept moist, but apart from that, grows like a weed. Okay, so you take a leaf of your sorrel, like that, you see that? It's Now you see this hard uh, backbone here, well we don't want that. Okay, the rest of the leaf sort of will meld into the dish as it heats. Um, the backbone won't. So, you end up with that. Okay, pop it on. And just tear off any excess like that. Okay, and gently press it down onto the mince okay I'll show you again it's very easy much the same as as you do with spinach or silver beet or Swiss chard or anything like that okay pop it on okay we'll be back when this is done Okay, so you can see it all coming together, can't you? This is why I said earlier you need two plates when you halve your fillets so that you can put the corresponding tops and the corresponding bottoms. Okay, this obviously is the top of this one. So, 
on, repop, and then that one goes on there, that one on there, and then that one on there. Now, these are coated, it's just the moisture has um, turned the, the, the coating, uh, sort of made it wet. Um, but believe me, it's sticky, it's there, alright? Okay, now we're at this point, we shall pop those aside and I'll tidy up and bring you back to show you how we cook these. Right, now you get a frying pan, but the frying pan must have a lid, okay? And you get a decent sized piece of butter like that. Put that in. And please don't substitute it for something else. You need the butter for the flavour. People are all so worried about, oh, you no, know, that's an inch of butter, and no one's putting it on a plate and asking you to eat it, are they? It's going to be lightly coated in it. The rest of it will be thrown out. So don't worry. You people worry far too much about these things. Okay, so we melt that down. Now we've got a rather large onion here, finely chopped. Now it's important that this butter um, does not burn. We want to lightly saute these onions. Keep an eye on that heat. Better it's on too low and it takes a bit longer rather than you burn it. Now that is starting to look how we want it. Now, don't be scared of this. I was terrified when I first started doing this. But it's not as bad as it looks. You take your parcels, and you carefully pick each one up, and you flip it over, and you put it in your frying pan. Flip it over in the frying pan. Flip it over in the frying pan. Flip it over in the frying pan. No, nope. that one's trying to get back out on its own. Sit. Okay. Wonderful. Now, you let that gently, gently cook. We don't want it burnt again, just let it gently cook for about five minutes with the lid off. Okay, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Another nerve-wracking feat you have to do is to turn them. Okay, now your best bet, just have something like that to stop them moving about. Get one end of your tongue underneath. And just flip it. Okay. Now, when done that, make sure they're all positioned nicely. This one's not sitting quite right. There. Okay. Now the final ingredient is this. I don't know whether I want to just drink it or put it in there. Maybe I better want to drink and put it in there. What do you think? Okay. Now this is a rather nice Chardonnay. 
Some of you may know my feelings on putting cheap alcohol into, um, into your dish. It'll ruin it. Go and cook baked beans on toast if that's what you want to do. If you want to wow your family and friends with tasty, flavourful food, the real thing. Okay, and when I say the real thing, this is not super expensive. We're talking sort of eight or nine dollars a bottle, so, and one glass. Okay, a hefty glass at that, but never, nevertheless. What you want to do, when is at that point, you drizzle over the top of your fillets. Okay. I'll just have that refilled for me, thank you. Okay. Now, pop the lid on. Turn it up full. Don't leave it like that, don't go anywhere. Turn it up full and stay with it, watch it. All you're doing is bringing it um, up, up to the boil, um, well, boil, up to a simmer. Okay, starting to simmer already. So with that, we turn it right down. Okay, your mincemeat in the middle with the egg will help bind it together. But, I mean, they'll still slip and slide, but you just have to make sure that when you serve it, and I'll show you how to do that when it's finished, when you serve it, um, you just go slow and steady, and if the top slips off, well, pop it back on again. No harm done. So we cook that with the lid on, gentle simmer for about 30 minutes, and then we just check it. And when the 30 minutes is up, we'll come back and I'll show you how to serve it up. Well, it's looking wonderful, smelling wonderful. Okay, so we take our lid off. Now, <laughs> serving it. Okay, let it drain. Use your egg flippy to hold it together. Tell you what, the aroma from this is to die for. There. Turn that off. Look at that. Couldn't be simpler. It smells wonderful. Succulent, delicious, every parcel a treat, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful dish. I hope you actually enjoy it, and I hope you try it. Wonderfully easy, and your family will love it. Okay, so hit the subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up, share us on social media, and... In the meantime, it's goodbye from Hilltop Farm. See ya!